Hey, what is up, everybody? And welcome to the College Info Geek Podcast Remote Edition. Martin and I are podcasting from our respective homes this week, trying to be responsible, trying to stay safe. Uh, But yeah, as always, this is the internet's best resource for getting ahead as a student, becoming more productive, but a terrible resource for learning not how to cut the tip of your finger off when using a mandolin in the kitchen. (sighs) Like an instrument? I have a Band-Aid. And like not, you were, not like you were just like, yes, I was down busting some sweet out tunes and then you cut your finger off. Exactly. I was busting out some sweet tunes, some sweet improvisational jazz fusion with a little bit of like Latin flair. And then boom, I love that. The, the mandolin was like, you're too good. We have to take away one of your fingers. And like this blade just came out of the thing. I don't even know from where it was like a little crazy, like secret compartment. It was like a saw movie or something. Bam, hit my finger. No, a, man- a mandolin's like, uh, you ever seen like the meat slicer in a deli? That's a bad question to ask me. I don't think so. But you've never seen like at a grocery store? Wait, is like, it kind of like-, like the thing where they slice, is it kind of like a bread slicer at Panera where they stick it through and it goes into a bunch of slices from a sort loaf? Sort of. But for me? Yeah, picture. picture <gasps> Wait, a- I'm remembering the subway days. Picture a ramp. It's like a plastic ramp, um, okay? And in the middle of that ramp, there is a blade and then like the the uphill part of the I ramp. I think you I've can, seen that at a subway. You can adjust the gap. So like if you have an apple yes. or something, you can just run it down the ramp and it will give you nice little slices. So you were like, what if I pet this? So I was nicely, because I was slicing up an apple. I was slicing up an apple, minding my own business, just getting some breakfast ready, ignoring the safety tip to use the plastic little thing that comes with it to hold the food in place. I was just using my hand like a Good pro work. chef, except for a pro chef knows when to switch from using their bare hand to using the safety thing. And I am not a pro chef. So That's I stupidly know. sliced the tip of my ring finger off on my right hand. And I've just been waiting for it to grow back. That's, I, so you have like no fingerprint there. You're going to, you can do robberies as long as you only touch things with one not, finger. It's not that bad, but yes, if I want to endure if a you lot were of like, pain, I'm going to, press the code but only with this finger they will never yeah. know if i want to type the code with like this don't mess up and hit use the other finger because open. once you mess up you're gonna you gotta start over you've ruined the whole case yeah I, I think like today finally it is no i would no longer qualify it as just an open wound uh it is finally growing itself oh, back so i have good. wolverine healing factor it's just it's it's so slow that it's not actually a superpower it's just normal healing factor like all the rest of us have. But yeah. <sighs> so for me, I have like okay. yet yet another potential attack vector for for whatever this virus going around. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, like uh, rub your broken finger on stuff. Good work. I am not doing that. I'm keeping lots of triple antibiotic ointment on it, keeping the Band-Aid on it, and hopefully it will just heal up without incident. Yeah, hopefully this podcast will go with that incident. We are having to employ a lot of technology to make this thing work. I mean, yeah, this is so what complex. we we've done this before. And I used to do podcasts with uh, my friend Andrew in New Jersey every single week. But it's been a long time since I've had to do a remote podcast. So I had to sort of give my myself a refresher course on how to make it all work. Yeah, except it. for it's like thrice complicated from the, when we did it. When we did it before, we just like recorded a Skype conversation. And now it's going to yeah. have better video and better audio, which required like 15, se- maybe 17 more applications. Could have well, been yeah. two. This is the big 17. league, Martin. This is the big league. We got to have. <laughs> I posted a story on Instagram of what my, my webcam looks like. <laughs> I have a Canon C200 suspended on uh, a magic arm above my monitor and then i had to put a webcam right next to it so it would look like i'm looking at you instead of using the laptop webcam which is over there yeah uh my phone is on this on a tripod behind my laptop on a small coffee-ish table my microphone needed to be a little lower because i'm sitting cesar right now on a rug with a yoga mat under it and I, my microphone is sitting on an ottoman that's slightly shorter than the table because it was not close enough to me otherwise. It's very complicated. Wait, you're sitting Cezar, mm-hmm. and you're going to sit Cezar for like an entire hour? Done it before. Holy crap. I don't even know how that's possible. I um, can't sit Cezar for like 
more than 30 seconds. I mean, seconds. I'll probably like shift positions a couple of times, <laughs> but it's not not going to be an issue. Gotcha. Well, I've been getting little notifications from Zoom that my internet connection is unstable. I'm going to go ahead and say Zoom is unstable since like everyone in the world is using it. At this I would very imagine moment. that that's the issue. I'm quite sure my internet is fine. Yeah, I've also gone to great lengths in recent days to reposition my router so my internet connection is not unstable. I had literally drilled holes in walls in the house so I could run Ethernet and have the router in a good centralized location, but still have the modem over by the one cable jack in the house that works. I probably could have made another cable jack work, but that would have been a whole other networking kerfuffle because I need Ethernet jacks to work. There's all sorts of fun stuff. Anyway, so you and I are working from home, but this is not really a big change for us, uh, especially you. Like, you No, I do everything to... from here anyway. Yeah, and I mean, I, I've been working quote unquote from home for the past 10, more than 10 years, honestly, because I went to college and I did all my homework, you know, didn't have to go to an office for that. But ever since I uh, went full time with College Info Geek, it's been a pretty much remote business um for a very brief period in time you and i had a co-working space membership that we used and then realized it was kind of just a oh, waste yeah. to that commute every that day didn't work very well the commute was really long and there are still types of works that i couldn't do there very mm -hmm. well yeah so uh what i want to do this week is kind of have us just discuss some of the things we've learned about how to effectively learn or or work from home. So whether you're a student who is now doing classes from home, um, if you're doing online college, and that's something that you're going to be doing even after we deal with all this craziness, or you're just somebody who has to work from home now, your company is like setting up remote work capabilities. Uh, we want to talk about some of the things we've learned about how to do it effectively. I'm actually working on a whole series of videos from my YouTube channel that it's going to go through kind of like the five main aspects of remote work that I think are the most important to discuss. So we're going to use this episode as sort of a brainstorming session to kind of help me clarify my thoughts on that, help you tell me things that maybe you've done, um, and also just give people like a primer they can use right away since it's going to take me a little yeah. while to produce those videos. Uh, we're also going to have a primer on the website uh, in article form, and we've already published a remote working hub page. So if you're on the main College Info Geek website, you may be used to the fact that you can uh, go into that drop down menu if you're on desktop or how, how does it work on mobile, Martin? Is it uh, is there like a topics button or is it the side menu? I forget. It's a side menu. There's a little topics menu in it. That's right. Yeah. So we, we've historically had four topics there. I think they're like productivity, academic success, um, uh, career success, and then just life in general. Uh, we now have a fifth one. And I'm not sure if it will always be there, but it's there now. It's just called remote. So we're kind of collecting all the resources we've created about remote work, um, how to stay productive at home, how to stay disciplined and motivated, how to create work-life balance. Uh, we've collected everything we've made in the past there, and we are currently working on more articles to help you guys out on that front. Um, so yeah, Martin, how do you want to how do you want to do this episode? Like I have that big Rome research outline, but there, there's a lot there. I don't know that I would call anything on Rome research an outline. What do you because, mean? Man, it's I looked at the grid form and then it. Wait, the grid form? I looked at the like graph where it shows like a thousand dots pointing to oh, other dots. The and I was just the like, graph this overview. is entirely unusable to me. What is this? Um, okay. Well, Rome research is like every page lets you create an outline. It's well, it's yeah, like that's workflowy true. or dynamic. Those, those pages create... those pages are still useful. Yeah. Well so basically but man, the idea the other of... thing is so complicated. It's like how would I it... ever even use this? Uh the graph overview is kind of just a visual overview of how you're really kind of supposed to use Rome. So instead of creating a hierarchy um based on like topics or whatever kind of rigid organizational structure that you want, um, which is what I've done my entire life in Evernote and Notion, it's more like um Kind of like a mind map, but not even really a, a mind map is more, you know, there's a centralized mother node and then it sort of branches out like a tree from there. But usually 
your uh, second, third, fourth, and onward uh, nodes don't connect to other nodes in other branches. Um, the way Rome works is it's sort of like a, uh, a metaphor for how your brain works, where every kind of neuron is connected to many, many others in this very complicated web. So if you're, if you're deliberate with how you do your page linking, um, and when you just like, when you, when you mention something you've already written a page about, you can just link it to that page and you can kind of start creating this interconnected web of ideas and observations and notes that kind of mimics the way your brain is set up. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of, a, it's still like a thousand times more complicated than I'm ever going to need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's because it turns a, out I'm, I'm still paradigm. using the main port main parts of my attention to look at that giant thing and go, but my brain searches its own neurons automatically. It just kind of does that. <laughs> I still have to scroll through this and figure out where the thing is. I mean, honestly, but I think it's just like, I like simplicity and you like, things that i consider very overcomplicated and in almost every situation so it makes perfect sense it's true it's really true that's the, like our was biggest like, difference as people i was racking my brain i was like can, can we name the new podcast in a way that sort of alludes to that dynamic and i don't really know i don't One know was like but it is min the max, biggest but i think min max was taken it is the biggest dynamic uh between us because we agree on most other things but this is a podcast. It's true about Give how to complexity. work and learn from home, and not that <laughs> in a simple we, way. We digress. Okay, you know what? Instead of just trying to go down a bullet list, um, I tweeted and asked people what they wanted to know about this, uh, and oh, got I saw a lot some of really responses. Good questions on there. Yeah, I saw some so really good questions. Why don't we kick this off with just? Yeah, I've got uh, some like some super questions. loose notes here, but yeah, we could just talk about it, go through some people's questions, and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we do that? And I'm sure that we'll end up getting to a lot of stuff. Uh, and l for anybody listening to this, uh, like I said earlier, the uh, article that I'm going to create, the hub page, like that's going to be a much more comprehensive, organized, well thought out resource. So right now we're just kind of jamming and riffing. Uh, but yeah, let's just jump into some of these questions. And luckily people have hearted the questions. Uh, so I kind of have a few that stand out as the ones people really want to know about. Oh, you have them. They're ranked kind of ranked uh, it, it's not really a fair ranking system because people have responded much more recently and then you know other people aren't aren't watching that thread mm -hmm. um so we can't trust it for actual ranking but we can at least grab some standouts to start with and the first one is how can you just how can you construct a dedicated workspace if you don't have another room to use as an office which is a great question because most people don't live in gigantic houses that have like you know, dedicated I'm in office my living rooms. room. That's, you know, my TV, that's my PS4 right Wait. there. If that's in frame, I'm in my living room right now. Oh, uh, I thought you were up in your, your bedroom or office. Oh, it, thing. It would No, no, that's a storage room now that we've moved everything from the apartment. <laughs> Wait, that, that's not even an office anymore. No, that's a storage room. My office is in the living room. So right now I am creating a separation while only in one space. Okay. All, all of, my room is the living room. Every single thing I have that I use is in here. Well, there there is another illustration of the difference between us because I have been taking some time to construct a dedicated office uh, as of late. But um, you're currently working in a multi-purpose room, and I mean, I spent two years in dorms, three years in dorms, uh, dealing with that, and then also had to use my bedroom as my office where I built my business for like the first three-ish years of College of Folk Geek being a thing. So we definitely have some experience here. Um, but I think you have kind of some of the more innovative ideas. Like we made that video once, which we can yeah, definitely make in the show back notes. back in Ankeny, we made that video. In fact, I can see behind you, you have the Shoji screen. Yep. So uh, you had this, this idea back when we were in Ankeny in Iowa to split your room with And it was a Shoji tiny screen. room. It was, it was like smaller than my, my room in, a, in college. Yeah. I was basically living in what was not supposed to be a full bedroom, I think. It was like a weird... I don't even know how to yeah. describe it. But it was like half now, the size of a bedroom. You did have one advantage because your bed wasn't in there. Yeah. But it was a smaller room. Oh, my I bed's think. small anyway. That's true. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, you had half the room kind of like split off visually with the shoji screen. One side was desk that had uh, your video games and your books and things like that. And then the other side was completely dedicated to work. 
And I yeah. remember like filming that video with you and walking over to the other side of the room where you had all your work stuff set up and just having that wall there kind of built some physical separation. It's really like having a separate room. Yeah. And as long as I'm sitting down, the wall's tall enough to make it a separate room. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just had two super cheap tables from probably Walmart at that time. Yep. And then I just yeah, stuck, this, out I stuck this shoji screen in between them. And, you know, I had one chair. So what would happen was when I move the chair over to the fun side, I'm done working. It was like a, an on and off switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. And the takeaway that I got from that setup wasn't that you need to go out and buy a shoji screen to divide oh, you your You could have done that with like a curtain or like anything that's not a shoji screen. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like you need to create a physical visual separation from all of the other things that you do in your life, your video games, your board games, your books, whatever it is, and your work. Because the way that attention works is sort of twofold. You have like your top down attention where you're kind of like working to focus actively on one task at a time. But there's also the component of attention that actively works to block out other stimuli in your environment. So if you have other things in your view, then your attentional muscles are having to work to block those out and not let them kind of grab your attention, um, which is tough because we are sort of wired to have interesting novel things grab our attention. You know, it makes yeah. perfect sense when like you're always on the lookout for a tiger popping out to try to eat you or you're like looking for food or whatever it is. But when you're trying to focus on a bunch of like Sigma notation for a math assignment and I don't know, your PlayStation is over there or your brother's over there. It's, it's very tough. Um, I don't think you need a curtain. I don't think you need a shoji screen. Uh, what you may just need to do is if you do not have space and if you do not have money or the ability to get some things to create physical separation in a permanent sense, just use some time to set up a space every single day and that could mean like hey maybe uh, it's not ideal to keep it this way but move your desk into a position that faces a wall or something do your oh, work yeah. there and you know it could even actually i think this could help like a part of your ritual for the day is setting up your workspace maybe moving your desk or setting something up and then you do your work and then you break it all down. You put it back. And that I think that has a twofold benefit that allows you to more effectively focus while you're working. But once your workstation has been put away for the day, there's no longer any temptation to just like slide into work again when you should be having personal time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a super important part of working or doing anything from home that I think a lot of people are going to run into is the, the mental health aspect of it, because yeah. I could work all day long. And mm -hmm. especially if I'm concerned about the state of the economy or, you know, am I yeah. going to have a job? I might be like, I should work 24 hours a day, but that's, that's going to shut down my ability to work well. So it'll hurt me in the long run. So being able to really yep. stop working at home is, is important for the more, um, some, a lot of people are a little, maybe too ambitious sometimes, and they find it hard to relax. <laughs> Those people need to learn to turn off on purpose. Yeah. I'm definitely in that camp. I mean, ever since all this yeah. stuff started happening, it's very hard to get my brain to disengage from the question of, am I doing enough to ensure that we are going to be good for the future? I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty right now and we could be done with this in a couple of months or we could be dealing with this for more than a year. I don't know. And, you know, I'm just constantly worried about like, Am I making enough stuff? Am I doing enough? Like, am I bringing in enough income to support not only myself, but my team? And I started to realize that like, because uh, I, you know, because there's, there's no, there's no opportunity for friends to be like, Hey, let's go out and, you know, go to a brewery or let's go get dinner. Or let's go to the arcade. Like that can't happen. Um, yeah. They're like, there's all closed really right now. So we're, we're just working. Yeah. The or only alone. thing I can do is the only thing I can do to leave the house is like go out and go for a run. That's it. And I can't even do that today because it's a blizzard right now. <laughs> yeah. First but, day of spring. Congratulations. Denver. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you know, I'm in my house and I've noticed that like I will keep working until 7, 8, 9 p.m. And then I realize like you know, I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Eventually, I'm going to burn myself out. So I have to shut my computer down. 
Otherwise, it's too much of a temptation. It's so easy to start using it again. I have yeah. to enforce that relaxation time, even if it's you know still technically like staring at a screen sometimes to play video games. Like it's it's a disengagement from the work, which yeah. is needed. Yeah, and like you said, setting up the desk is the opposite because I know a lot of people are going to listen to that and be like, well, um, actually, I never want to be working, and it's super hard to focus. <laughs> Maybe we're we're probably not the not everybody you know since we yeah. both are more inclined to work but setting mm-hmm. up that area where you're specifically supposed to work is helpful like right now obviously my ps4 is right there this podcast setup was just thrown together so that i had all the stuff in the right position yeah without showing off like my i wanted a background that was interesting because it's video this is more nice than my kitchen and the blizzard so there like, is a shoji screen yeah but there's just tea in front of that it's not even a separator anymore. It's just for decoration. Mm-hmm. My work desk is right over here facing a big open window. Yeah. And when I'm facing that direction, I can't see my piano, my TV, anything. So I've I've put off a different wall entirely that's just like that. It's just for me, it's permanent. I don't have to move the desk every yeah. day. Yeah. And like, I don't think that you need to move the desk every day. It's just oh, no. a lot but of if people you had are one desk, then that would be with, helpful. Exactly. A lot of people were living with family. Um, there's just what not I a done lot in of college, room. you know, before so, I was just having furniture. Yeah. If I was living in a, a much smaller space or if I was living with multiple people, what I would probably do is uh, get like a fold out table and every day set that up, set up my laptop, get my notebooks out, do my work and then put that away. You know, and try to set it up in an area that is um, not as prone to the distraction. You may have to communicate with people, say like, you know, we're home, but y'all need to pretend that I am at work because I am at work. And when I'm at yeah. work, I have the ability to work undistracted by other people. Um, and we've talked about ways to deal with that. I know you had some pretty innovative ideas where you had uh, like a hue light bulb where Ashley could change the color of it if she wanted your attention, but not yeah. in an urgent way. Yeah. Like, like red or purple or something was I'm programming. I'm so deep in that if you come in here, it will only startle me. I won't be able to listen to you and I will forget <laughs> everything I was working on. Everything will be messed up. So yeah. she would just change the light to teal. I'd be like, okay, at the next stopping point, I will go see what it is she wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you don't yeah. have to have a hue light, you know, I just, I, I also wanted the fun lights. You mm-hmm. could easily just have like a little sign or like a, just literally any sort of prop. You could just sit up next to you while you have your headphones on or something and be like, if this is, if this is there, if that rubber duck is right there, I'm busy. Yeah. This week's episode of our show is brought to you by our friends over at Brilliant, which is a fantastic learning resource for anybody who wants to improve their level of mastery in the areas of math, science, or computer science. And in addition to being a great STEM resource, it's also a great tool for anybody who wants to boost their overall problem-solving skills, because Brilliant's entire library of courses are built upon the principle of active learning. They have you immediately wrangling with interactive problems, with code writing challenges, with things where you have to, you know, drag and drop elements into the right place. And in doing so, you get to wrangle with the concepts actively instead of just sitting back and passively intaking material. And by doing it this way, you learn more efficiently, you remain, you remember and retain material uh, more effectively, and you stay interested for longer. And this applies to all the courses in their library, which number more than 60 at this point. Now, Brilliant actually has a couple of brand new courses they've launched very recently that I want to tell you about, one of which is their Calculus in a Nutshell course, which kind of helps people to learn calculus from a bird's eye view and learn how it's applied in the real world. So if you've been intimidated by calculus in the past, if you thought that maybe this isn't for me, maybe it's a little bit too esoteric or abstract, this course is a great way to sync your teeth into it and to learn how it can actually be very fascinating and very useful. And they also have a neural networks course, which shows how you can set up neural networks and set up feedback loops that allow these things to get smarter and to solve problems more effectively. So if you're a computer scientist or you're somebody who wants to get into programming or software development, learning how neural networks work could be another cap in your feather and another skill in your skill set that allows you to be more competitive in today's landscape where technology is always changing and people who only, you know, only only specialize in one specific area often find themselves uh, kind of out of luck sometimes when that area no longer becomes viable. So you really want to build this 
uh, this, you know, broader skill set where you're able to connect to lots of different things and combine them creatively. Now, in addition to their library of courses, Brilliant also has a feature called Daily Challenges, where every day there's a brand new problem that they release to the members. And uh, in doing that problem, you can make learning a daily habit and you can make problem solving a daily occurrence as well. Again, when you're applying your mind to new problems every single day, you build a universal problem solving ability that's very useful to anything that you tackle in the future. So if you want to give Brilliant a try, you can go over to brilliant.org slash college of a geek and get started for free today. Their free plan gives you access to those brand new daily challenges. And if you're one of the first 200 people to use that link and sign up, you're going to get 20% off their premium subscription, which gets you access to that entire library of in-depth courses, which by the way, includes a full math suite. So not just calculus, but you can start with the basics of number theory, algebra, geometry, all that kind of stuff, and go up to advanced statistics, differential equations, all kinds of great topics. So if you want to improve your mastery, go to brilliant.org slash college of geek and give it a try. Huge thanks as always to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode of our show and being a big supporter of College Info Geek. And another big thanks goes out to our second sponsor this week, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning library for anybody who wants to boost their skills in lots of practical areas that can make you more competitive in your career field. They have thousands of classes covering graphic design, video editing, motion design, after effects. They have music production courses, podcasting courses, uh, business analytics, marketing, and even product activity courses. And because we're talking about working from home this week, which is something that requires uh, a little bit of an upgrade when it comes to self-discipline, self-management, motivation, I'm going to recommend my own course on building strong habits. This is a course that launched this January, so it's a pretty new course, but it's already doing really well, getting lots of great feedback. And I'm really proud of what we put out here. I think this is going to be a really helpful course for anybody who wants to improve their own self-discipline and their own ability to build strong habits and routines. Routines. This is the big thing here. You want to build strong routines that allow you to not have days where you get up and just don't know what to do and end up you know, not getting anything done. If you have strong routines, you kind of know what to do. And because they're habitualized, you don't have to exercise a ton of willpower to actually do them. So this course will teach you how to set your goals, how to choose which goals you should focus on if you have a ton of them like I do, and then how to turn those goals into neatly broken down sequences of actions that you can practice every single day. And then the second half of that class, we're going to teach you exactly how you can stick to those things through commitment devices, through accountability, and lots of other cool stuff. So if you want to take that course, you can actually do it for free by signing up for a free trial of Skillshare over at Skillshare.com slash geek. But if you want to get that free two-month trial, you're going to need to be one of the first 500 people to use that URL. So once again, Skillshare.com slash geek, be one of the first 500 people to sign up and you're going to get that two-month free trial. Afterwards, Skillshare is still incredibly affordable. It's about 10 bucks a month, which makes it basically the same cost as your Netflix subscription, but a heck of a lot more useful to your future. And that is exactly why I have chosen to put my courses on Skillshare. It's very affordable. It's very accessible. And in addition to my own material, you get access to thousands of courses from tons of other great teachers. So check it out. Once again, Skillshare.com slash geek. And thanks as always to Skillshare for being a huge supporter of our show, which we are now going to get back into. A few other things I want to talk about with relation to environment. Um, if you don't have a good pair of headphones, those can be a lifesaver for helping you focus. Uh, I think you're wearing noise canceling headphones right now. Yep. If I were to guess, I have a pair of noise canceling headphones right over here. I'm not wearing them because I don't know if the Bluetooth would create latency and I wanted a direct connection to my uh, yeah. audio interface. These are both. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, so... I always used closed back normal headphones in college and basically like for uh, over the ear headphones, which are called circum aural uh, as opposed to supra aural, which sit on your ears. There are two different designs of circum aural headphones, open back and closed back. So open back basically means that there's not a whole lot of material or mass closing off those headphones and your ears from the world. Um, the benefit of open back headphones is they typically have better sound quality uh, or at least more accurate sound quality, especially for genres of music that are not like rock and rap, which are very bass heavy. Um, so a lot of people like those like audiophiles love open back headphones. But the problem with those is when you're wearing them, if you're not in an acquired environment, you're going to hear basically everything going on. Uh, 
my favorite headphones are open back. I have a pair of uh, Sennheiser HD 665s, I want to say. And they are fantastic, but not great for creating a nice sound isolated environment. But for like, I think like 25 or 30 bucks, you can get a pretty good pair of closed back headphones. I know Sennheiser makes a pair um, along those lines around that price. Uh, I would not be surprised if like companies like Anchor are now making stuff around that price range. Uh, and then if you want to step up to active noise cancellation, like I remember when, when I tried your headphones, my mind was blown at how well it works. That That's how I didn't even know what noise canceling was. And then I wasn't excited when I got these from my company. Yeah. I was just like, cool, I got headphones, I guess. But then when I was like, wait, what? It it, it like gets the inverse sound and then like yeah. they fight each other and it uses physics to make the sounds go. This is incredible. And then I was sitting there working on some linguistics project right mm-hmm. next to the incredibly loud anime blaring TV in our, in our basement when we all lived together. And I was just like completely focused. Nothing could even yeah. bother me. It was incredible, the difference it, that it's, it made. It is utterly fantastic. It's, it felt like you all were in like four rooms away. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have music on. I find that if you have nothing yeah. on, it definitely cancels out um, a lot of noise and especially it cancels out uh, consistent frequencies. Um, but things that are variable, it has a little bit of a harder time with. But if you have like study music going, even, you know, even just like rain or ambient noise, it really helps to cut down. Yeah. So my, my beef with, active noise cancellation and headphones is they were always super expensive. Uh, I think the, the Bose ones you have were like 300 bucks. Well, these, these are you got them. They're like, yeah, they're, yeah, they're you got the cool ones. They're expensive, but they were from my company for like Christmas. So yeah, you just got them. I tried yours. I love the noise cancellation on them. I felt they were a little bit small for my head. So I got the Bose QC 35s. I think these are old enough to be the first model, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but they're still like, I think they're like 260 bucks now. But I learned the other day that Anchor now makes a pair that's like $60. And wow. apparently, so I was looking at Wirecutter's article on it and they said like the active noise cancellation is pretty darn good. So for 60 bucks? That's like, way more approachable. I would have actually yeah. purchased those in college maybe. Yeah, I mean, I haven't tested them. Whereas I just, I'm I, looking at their I would have been way less likely to buy $300 headphones. I would have looked at a $60 pair seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, speaking of things that are expensive, the AirPods Pro have active noise cancellation and it is oh, surprisingly yeah. good. Uh, yeah, so my friend Dave, uh, who has like tinnitus, he puts those in when he's on planes. He puts those in and then he puts the bows over top and gets double noise cancellation. <laughs> and just like... Does he go insane dissing. hearing his heartbeat? Or... Uh, I don't think you hear your own heartbeat with active noise cancellation. Uh, uh, it cancels your heart, or you it does. die. It stops your own heart, but no, uh, it, right. it like puts you in stasis and gives you oxygen from an alternate dimension. That's, That's how cool. that works. Yeah, alternate dimension technology, man. It's, noise cancellation. No, yes, yeah, it's, it's got noise cancellation and alternate dimension technology. It's kind of like a little footnote. No one really cares about that one, but you know, active noise cancellation. Um, and then there's there's lots of uh, sources of study music and and ambient noise. Um, Noisly used to be a big recommendation of mine. They just recently switched up to uh, having like a payment plans, which is annoying. Oh, really? Yeah. So it used to be just like totally free. You just went to noisly.com and it just had like a mixer and you could just mix all these sounds that you wanted, which is great. Uh, now you can still do that, but it's like, I think you can only listen for 90 minutes a day for free. And after that, it goes up to $10 a month for yeah. unlimited listening, which well, like that may be useful for you, but like 10 bucks a month is that's what Spotify costs. I would say that there's, if you limit yourself to the free, there's at least a little benefit in that you'll be like, I got to get all my work done in this 90 minutes. <laughs> you got to <laughs> time. True. If it's the, you pick your work wisely for what work deserves noisily. But yeah. yeah, that's, I don't know that I would, I, I pay for brain FM, but that's slightly different than noisily and i don't think it's as expensive yeah well so there's also um ambient dash mixer.com and people have just like made these long mixes of ambient noises so you're not you're not going to get as much customization as noisily because noise lets you mix whatever you want but there's like you know ravenclaw common room there's like a crackling fire and people you know writing in books and stuff and that just goes on forever and it's free and then youtube well, has cool 
tons of like 10 hour rain, 10 hour ambient noise. So personally, I wouldn't start paying $10 a month just for unlimited noise when I could just get it for free on YouTube. But yeah. Uh, and then, and there's lots of study music too. I know you use brain FM, which is great. Um, I really I like a, the weird wavy thing that it does. It helps me focus. I don't know if it's due to magic science or just because it's like <laughs> repetitive enough, the waves that I'm just like, this is interesting. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, it's just a I, cool thing. 2016, I tried to do an article on, you know, binaural beats, all these kind of things. And I talked with brain FM's, uh, they had like a neuroscientist on staff at the time. I don't think they have the same guy anymore. Uh, the conclusion I came to was number one, there is a certain level of scientific research that just goes over my head. <laughs> but number two, it, it seemed like the jury was still out on whether or not that kind of music actually modulates brain waves into a better direction. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't like, it that, wasn't like, I would say I focus well with it. So all I know is that it, yeah, it helps. You focus well with it and you've been doing it for like three, four years now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, that's awesome that it works for you. It I works personally well. could just use, be because I like the sounds. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I use my study music playlist for the most part, um, which we'll have in the show notes or just go to college slash playlist. I add new stuff to it every week and I also make, my Oh, sometimes I put music in the background and then, uh, oh, you've been, how much do you have that up? You have that, uh, I know you had the one song. Have you been, I have, I have two right now. Okay. I didn't know you I had the second one. A front to all that is good and holy number two. Um, the first one is like not a very good song. It's on YouTube. But it's not good enough to have on Spotify. And then, uh, icicle swords is the one that I made when you were over at my house, actually. Oh, I remember that. The live looping one. Yeah. And I would like to do more. Um, I just need to get some free time. Yeah. I'd like to take stuff like that. Like I'll take instrumental music sometimes mm -hmm. and that, that doesn't do enough to block out other thoughts to me, but mm. I'm always overthinking things. So what I'll do is I'll put a really quiet, like rain brain FM track on, or it could work with any other white noise kind of thing on, you know, that you wanted. So mm -hmm. I try to make it so that there's music and then also an extra layer of blocking out neutral white noise stuff. Hmm. Weirdly for me, depending on the task, uh, I often find it useful to play a, a higher energy song, like like a metal song with vocals on repeat. I only agree I with do that the for same one type song. of task. But what is that, like programming? I don't do the same. Or? When I'm doing incredibly focused programming, what I need is the album Red and Tooth and Claw by Bats because it is, it is mm. super crazy, hyper energetic, like math rock or something. Yeah. And it's too powerful. So what I do is I only use it for the big projects. I can't use it all the time. That's, <laughs> that's what I use when like I'm finishing the website or when I'm like, I need to stay up for the next 12 hours to finish this go. Yeah. And then I just loop the album and the whole, it's the only thing that'll keep me going. Yep. For me right now, it's the album Eclipse by Wolves of the Gate, which is also just, you know, it's like metal core, basically. Yeah. Uh, but I, I will sometimes loop just one song and just because I've heard the song a million times, it really doesn't distract me. And I can do research to that. You know, a lot of times I'm just like doing research for me is just finding a ton of resources that I can collate into one big document and then start going through and scanning and for that, I, I don't really care if there's lyrics. Uh, it just needs to be something that I've heard a million times already. And that works pretty well. Uh, I, I can't do lyrics <clears throat> normally, but the, the really yeah. loud energetic stuff sometimes. Also, those lyrics are hardly like relevant. They're like talking yeah. about a bunch of weird stuff. It's not, not going to distract me the same way that like more relevant hip hop lyrics might. Yeah, I do like that Bats album. I should go listen to it again. Uh, one more thing about environment. I, you know, that whiteboard I had in the dining room yeah, that we were using for like meeting plans. I've moved that directly to the side of me on my wall in my office. So, uh, I've gone back to what I used to do at the end of college. And for the first few years of college info geek, where at the end of the night I would come in and write out a checklist for the next day with just a few items. And it's just kind of staring me in the face all day long, reminding me like these are the things you have to get done, ideally in the order in which you should do them. Yep. And having that constant reminder there is helpful for me. 
Um, there's a lot more you can do, uh, especially if you have trouble staying on task. Like, I mean, the Pomodoro technique is always useful. Uh, you could use a time time tracking app. Um, I know you liked the Timeular device. I which, thought that was pretty cool. If if you actually if you want it back, they sent me a second one to test. I guess it's like a, oh. a new firmware or something. So oh, we have cool. two. If you wanted to use the other one, maybe. Uh, uh, usually, I just like time. I time block stuff. That so works like, too. Like the night before, I'll I'll block out when am I waking up, my short morning routine, and then I'll put like the first half hour of my work day as get situated and figure out what I'm doing, and then time block out the rest of the day. You know, that way each yeah. morning I can wake up, have a little time to prioritize and then say, this will probably take an hour. This will probably take a half hour. Yeah. Et cetera. Otherwise it's easy for me to do one task that, and then like override all of the others and just let them go mm-hmm. for weeks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. So next thing I want to talk about is accountability because a lot of people have written to me saying, I have a lot of trouble staying on task, especially when I'm working at home. Um, I just can't, I can't discipline myself to do what I'm supposed to do. And what I have found is the absolute best way for me to get things done is if I feel accountable to somebody else to do them. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, I'm sort of a horrible procrastinator. Um, and I, I'm not a procrastinator in the sense that I will just waste time on stupid things. Like you're not going to find me just playing PlayStation in the middle of the day. I will never do that. But I'm very good at convincing myself that the the important thing I need to do can be put off for a while while I do this other thing that technically does push things forward, just not in the way that is most needed right now. Uh, yeah, you you take your priority <laughs> lists and then you flip them. You and, and yeah. avoid, you do the, le- the lower priority things first as a distraction. I do, and I'm my brain is incredibly good at at creating justifications for doing this that I will believe. Uh, so what really helps me is having somebody who will basically like hold my feet to the fire. Um, and so, you know, the, the reason that I get videos out is because my agency has a person who will literally bug me and they're like, hey, make sure you get this video done <laughs> on this date. <laughs> and in the past, I've had like um, be a uh, beeminder set up to like charge me money if I didn't get things published on a specific date. And I've been thinking about yeah. actually setting that back up. Um, and I am going to actually hire a fitness coach which will force me to film my workouts ostensibly so that he can critique form. But the most important benefit there will be that I have to send him the footage on my workout days. Mm. And if I don't, then, you know, that'll be a failure, not just for me, but for someone else. And I I find that very powerful. Um, So one thing that I would suggest is finding a way to get an accountability partner of some kind. Now a coach can cost a lot of money. Um, I've got friends who have business coaches. I've got friends who have their own fitness coaches already. They have dietary coaches. Uh, a lot of times, you know, that costs a lot of money. Like when I was doing figure skating, that was like $60 an hour. And she definitely kept me accountable. Like I had to go practice on the off days. And if I wasn't making progress, like I would get an earful and that definitely motivated me, but that costs a lot of money. Yeah. But accountability partners don't cost money. Because if you can find somebody who also wants to stay accountable and you can build a system for uh, that allows you to sort of hold each other's feet to the fire, then that you can get those benefits without having to, you know, fork over money for the privilege. Yeah. So one example, uh, and I'm not sure if, if you do anything yourself, but I, I know you've been my accountability partner for many years. Uh, one great example is we had that reading challenge a few years ago where I told you I was going to read 25 pages of nonfiction a day. I gave you a spreadsheet that tracked my progress. And I said, I'd give you a hundred dollars if I failed to read even one day. Uh, and luckily you're not the kind of person who would try to actively sabotage me to get a hundred dollars. So I got a lot of reading done during that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, if- I'm willing to prioritize that you should get that done. So if it's like, Hey, maybe, maybe let's go forget your goal. Let's go to the arcade. Like, I w- I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, yeah. do your goal so that we can then go to the arcade. 
Yep. But yeah, I consider other people's goals sometimes more important than accomplishing my own. Yeah, which I don't know if that's healthy every well, single time. When but... I'm supposed to keep track of somebody else's goals. Yeah. Uh, so how can people find an accountability partner? Because not all people are good candidates for accountability partners. Well, you don't necessarily. Sometimes you can just go to your close friends, but you should really question what kind of people they are and whether that, that makes sense. Because a lot of my close friends are friends because we like video games and stupid jokes. That doesn't qualify yep. them to keep track of my goals. They may not find that interesting. You know, they, they, they don't, maybe they just don't want to. Yeah. Um, I know Ashley and I can hold each other accountable for things, but you know, because we, we live together and therefore I can be like, Hey, what are you doing? The Twitter? Why do I see Twitter? <laughs> Wrong. I'm going to block Twitter. Don't make me do it. And then, you know, I could, I could pay attention because I care. So it's mm -hmm. gotta be somebody who really cares about your, your progress, not just you as a person for fun, but yeah. your progress. And ideally you yeah. should care about their progress and ideally they should care about their progress in something because it'll be, mm -hmm. I think more fulfilling if both people do have goals they're yeah. looking toward. I've seen some people look on um, the CIG subreddit mm -hmm. looking for like, um, what do you, you call them Jedi councils, right? The, yeah. the mastermind group type things where people yep. would, how does that work? They get on what a group call or something every once in a while to, yeah, the way Check that I used to do it going. with with my council is uh, every two weeks we would have a group call, and uh, the group call would start with us going through um, the the goals that we set for each other, or I guess ourselves, the previous call, and kind of saying like, "Here's you know what we what went right, what went wrong." Um, so just sort of having to report back to the council of what we did, and then every week we would rotate through the group, and somebody would be in the hot seat where we would kind of focus in on an issue they were having or a project they were working on. Uh, and then we'd end with everyone stating what they were going to do in the next two week period. So okay. that way, the next time we had the call, we could uh, report back again. Uh, and I, I think it's important. Well, I guess the first thing I want to say here is something that is beneficial here is that the person you find doesn't necessarily need to be a great friend doesn't necessarily, and this is going to sound bad, but doesn't necessarily need to care about you from a friendship perspective at first. They can be somebody who cares to help and push you because they want you to push them too. Yeah. Like a workout partner. Like I met in college, I met a guy on Reddit and we became workout partners and we eventually became friends, but we didn't really know each other that well. We were just like, Hey, I want to make sure I get my butt to the gym three days a week. You do too. Okay. Let's agree that we're going to meet and work out together. If you can over find time, somebody like that, that's, that's almost even better because they're, yeah. they're not going to just ask you to hang out at first. Yep. It's strictly business. You're both there for this. In fact, uh, my friend Antonio, he, he hires business coaches, but he rotates through them because he, he says, uh, as my relationship with each business coach becomes deeper and we become friends, it actually becomes harder to, <laughs> uh, for that person to hold me accountable because the more you become a friend with somebody, the more willing you are to accept their excuses. You become like a little bit more empathetic, which is kind of a bad thing sometimes because sometimes you need to call someone on their BS and be like, no, that's not a really good excuse. You just, yeah. Uh, like, I don't, it's like something like overcomplicating everything at the last second. Like that, it could be kind of like that, but then you can't do anything because <laughs> yeah. you can't go over to their house because of the, the the coronavirus. You know exactly. Yeah, I don't. I feel a little no called idea. out right now, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little called out right now. But Good. it's yeah, it's true. And from the the other side of it, it's like you know, the more friends you are with somebody, like the. I mean, this is like it, it sucks to say it, but like we often like take our friends for granted, and we're. I don't know, we're a little bit more afraid to admit failings to somebody we don't know very well. Because mm. you haven't like humanized them as much. And it's like, uh, you know, it's it's like being afraid of rejection when you want to ask someone on a date. You don't know them, so you don't know how they're going to react. So you just assume that they're they're probably going to react badly, you know, towards you or, or brush you off. Uh, and that can be useful in an accountability sense. Um, 
So, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's not the greatest idea to en- enlist your, your best friends. Yeah. Your you, would, you would really want to consider whether the friends make sense to do it, but it's mm-hmm. otherwise like more acquaintances or new people are, they're more focused on your goals and less focused on you feeling okay with whether you're busy that day. And then, um, so yeah. Ashley has a, a problem with this where she's, she's like, right now we can't really go to cafes or anything. Mm-hmm. She works a lot better in a cafe because the mere presence of people around her makes her feel like people could see that I'm just on Twitter. People could see that I'm yeah. just messing around. So I will focus while I'm there. And then when she's at home, I'm not upstairs right now. Like she could be on Twitter this whole time. We're podcasting. I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah. So one thing that uh, I think we tried once and we might be doing more that we literally can't have her just go to cafes right now where um, I would just set my phone up and we would be on FaceTime kind of just there. Oh, yeah. You could do the same thing with a group chat on Zoom or Skype or Google Google Hangouts mm-hmm. or something. But it's just like the mere presence of somebody there might help because I, I don't know if there's a name for it, but there's like this psychological thing where if there are like paintings of an eye or a person with eyes, like people are slightly less likely to either not focus or to try to steal because the subtle oh. feeling of being watched is if, is effective. Yeah. Um, well, there is the, uh, the Hawthorne effect, which is that people change their behavior when they know they're being observed. Yeah. And there's, there's uh, also that. And so there's like, like if, there's if very you interesting, observe you there's like interesting changes and mm-hmm. there's, there's like, you know, men will subconsciously change the way they walk when they know a woman is watching. They don't you even know they're like a dancey walk and they start. Oh yeah. It's like a stretch. <laughs> That's, you know, yeah. like, I mean, you got to do that. I consciously do that. I make an effort. Well, I always walk like that. So, you know, either that or with like hands in shoes, like walking on my hands. Yeah. One of you know, I rotate between those two. <laughs> gotta but yeah. Fly. Uh, I used to do that with my friend, Alex, we would get on a Skype call, but we would just be silently working. And just the realization that somebody was on the other line also working, it felt very much like we were in the same room working. Yeah. As, um, as long as it's not the kind of person where you're going to immediately start talking about something different, be like, hey, you want to do this later? And then yeah. you distract it and then you've ruined the whole thing. Exactly. Uh, you know, for some people, uh, if you want, you know, a work partner who absolutely will not respond to anything you say, you could just go put on one of those study with me videos. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I have a whole playlist that is of those. kind of like that thing, but without needing another person. I think it's college. Have, have Tom there and imagine there that in the video at any second, he might turn and face you and see whether you're working. Maybe I should, I should do a study with He's me video watching. where I just like look up every once in a while. I'm like, still working. Mm. <laughs> Actually, you know, I think I, I you know, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to have study with me where I just like, Look up every once in a while, like, hey, get off your phone. Yeah. And statistically, one person watching it will probably be on their phone. Yeah. Unless you use the phone to watch the video, then you can't use your phone. Brilliant. Mm. Got well, there you go. That's that's not a bad idea. There are also purpose built tools for this, or at least one that I can think of. It's called Focus Mate. And it's literally built for you to be matched with somebody who also wants just like a work partner to be on the line with them. And I don't, I don't know if it's like a group thing where you can have more than one, but you can at least be matched with one person who's also working. And, you know, if you want to ask for feedback at some point you can, but the main purpose is just to kind of simulate the feeling of being in a coffee shop or being like at a table at your, you know, dorm commons room or something, just getting work done. And anything you can do to simulate that is, you know, probably going to help a little bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I have a hard stop in a half an hour and probably need some prep for that. So why don't we take one more question from okay. the Twitter thread? Are you looking at the Twitter thread yourself or not? Nope. Okay. Well, there's a, there's Wait, a you're lot on Twitter, of Twitter, Tom. What are you doing on Twitter? I'm looking. looking I'm looking focusing. at. I'm looking at the thread. That's not true. He's probably reading some nonsense. Yeah. All right. Why don't we take this one really quick? How do you balance health and studying? I'm always on my couch because of this quarantine. This is somebody who's in Italy, so they're literally stuck at home oh, all day. Yeah, yeah. because if, if you're healthy, you'll also work better. You'll you'll do everything better and you'll be happier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I use Ring Fit 
that's not necessarily if somebody has it or you can get it it's an oddly effective workout video game it's actually really good it yeah it works at it i get really difficult workouts Mm -hmm. like it's good but it's hard to find right now for this particular situation so i've heard of some people price gouging um i used to have a pull-up bar um and i know you still have more equipment along those lines I have a door frame pull up bar, a 45 pound kettlebell and two 15 pound dumbbells. And then oh, yeah, I, I have, I have, I have like my Ninja warrior bananas that I could hang from the pull up bar and I have my DDR machine pads, but that's like probably the least relatable thing <laughs> that I could say I have because it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like a door frame pull up bar is like $25 on Amazon. I think, um, you know, weights are not that expensive. The biggest thing that I would say, you know, if number one, if you're in quarantine, you can't really go outside, which sucks. Uh, you know, and the, the thing, I think I'm most thankful for right now is at least at this point, I can go out for a run or a walk if I yeah. want to. Can't really go anywhere other than the grocery store, but I can at least go for an you know, outdoor excursion. Um, but if there comes a point that I am stuck inside for two weeks, I will be doing bodyweight exercises. So I do have my pull-up bar and all that, but there's, you know, push-ups, there's sit-ups, uh, there's yoga, tons of yoga poses you can do with very oh, yeah, little yeah. space. Um, uh, you can do body weight squats. And if those are too easy, you can do pistol squats with one leg. Uh, that would actually be a great challenge for somebody who can, if you can do like uh, 50 or a hundred body weight squats with no weight, then you should be able to work up to a pistol squat in a few weeks. I would say you could use the wall for balance while you're working on it. You got to do um, handstand push-ups. Do handstand push-ups. Obviously, yep. those are a classic. Um, Just don't flip over and break your glass coffee table. Don't do anything did you that do would that? require you. No, no, I just I saw a a video one time where some okay, girl was like, I didn't do that. Some girl was but... doing handstands against her door, and then she fell over and broke her glass coffee table, which had a lit candle on it, and then like oh, lit her apartment yeah. on fire. Okay, so be careful with the handstand push-ups. Also, <laughs> do not do. Uh, I, to anybody who makes this same mistake, I didn't hurt myself doing it, but in college, I would hang from the door frame pull-up bar to do sit-ups. Oh, don't I didn't do that. think about how dumb that was <laughs> at the time. So if you're like me and you're like, whoa, I feel so cool. Also think about whether you'll feel cool when you crush your skull and take some precautions. Um, I mean, the biggest thing I've been thinking about is don't do anything that likely results in you needing to go seek medical attention yeah, that would be inconvenient wouldn't it I'm, because I'm like how how much medical attention is there to go around right now when i cut my finger that was the very first thing i was thinking is like i gotta deal with this myself yeah you know i'm not gonna go um, burden the healthcare system with my stupid finger cut you know if, uh, if it would have been bad enough i would have gone but you may be able to get some cool cardio in at home that isn't just like jumping jacks and, and i just thought about this because with ring fit you like run in place and it, mm-hmm. you're moving through the track, right? But I yeah. bet if you go on YouTube, there are videos of people who have been jogging with like a GoPro. You put that on, you jog in oh. place, and you feel like you're going down the trail. If you're getting a little bit of like, I wish I was moving. Because yesterday I saw on Twitter, there was this walkthrough video of some place in Japan, I believe. And I was just like, this is cool. It feels like I'm out exploring a city. Oh, yeah. Rather than that sitting cool. still. So you might be able to like do a little, little bit of a, a quick jog through somebody else's GoPro route, it's, uh, I would say, better than nothing, if that's your other option. Yeah. Something I used to do uh, when I could not afford my own DDR pads, couldn't even afford like the little foam fold-out ones because I didn't have a PlayStation 2, um, I had Stepmania on my computer, and I could play with the keyboard, but sometimes I would just open Stepmania and turn on No Fail, and then like have the arrows going up, but then like just shadow oh, it. You you're like and play it and play like play it on the floor. Play. You're like the little brother who whose controller isn't actually plugged in, but they're yes. pretty sure they're playing. Yes. So it sucks because there's no actual feedback. You don't actually get to see the things hitting it. You could bring up like nowadays. There's plenty of just let's plays of people playing DDR or Step Mania and just showing the screen. So you could technically bring up like a full combo video if you wanted to see it actually hitting and then just play it in place, you know? And like my 12 year old self would say, yeah, it sucks. Would much rather actually have the pad. But if you don't have it and you can't leave, it's actually a pretty good way to get cardio. 
And I would probably do that before I would jog in place. But I would probably still do either one over nothing. Yeah. Well, and that makes a lot of sense too, because you're really into like the, the rhythm challenge things. And I'm more into exploring for virtually everything. Yes. So like, yeah, and that, good that, options, I'd say. that is I'm, it's not like I'm going to start jump roping in here and like accidentally swing it over and break some glasses or something. I, I feel like I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But it, if you have a VR headset, just play uh, Beat Saber. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be cool. But I'm, try, I'm trying to VR suggest would be things so that... cool for those video walkthroughs. Oh, it's yeah. just that I don't have any VR, so I can't do that. I've never done video walkthroughs with VR, but I have used the Google Earth app oh nice uh, using the vive and it is incredible to go i mean looking at the map view is incredible because you feel like a bird in the sky but it's incredible to go down to street view how to take a free vacation while quarantine it was super cool Use google earth and yeah. also walk through videos in your my VR. mom came over and we used the vr headset to go to where she grew up in california and she like showed me the street that she lived on and like this wow. cool like canyon that was out her backyard and it was awesome That's like really cool i had never been there in real life and you know if it's obviously not as cool to go in there in real life but it's like it's surprisingly cool to Just see my mom a vr yeah there you go i think it's getting cheaper like the vibe was really expensive but now they have um and i don't know what the price is but my friend matt has whatever one F- facebook owns like the oculus go or something like that something something like that i don't know what the price is but the vibe that I have is very complicated. It like literally it plugs into your computer. You have to have like a crazy graphics card. You have to set up these boxes on your walls to create the space. The Oculus go is like you put it on and apparently it sets its own boundaries by having cameras on it. Hmm. And then with the vibe, if you get near your boundary, it just, it shows you like this virtual fence thing with the Facebook one. The moment you get to your boundary, the cameras turn on so you can see that you're about to hit something. And I oh. was like, damn. The That's only thing I didn't like about it is because it was completely wireless, like it's a totally self-contained thing. Um, I think it, it runs off Android. I found Beat Saber to not be quite as responsive and good at the timing oh, as the Vive one. Um, but other than that, like the it was pretty great. So yeah, if if I were to if I didn't already have a vibe and I was looking into VR, I probably would look into that one because like it, the convenience factor and the, the geo fencing stuff worked really, really nicely. Anyway, um, I need to get set up for my tax appointment, which Yay. is going to be so fun. I think we actually, we went through most of the stuff that I had in my very loose, disorganized notes. Just, Oh, cool. We just kind of happened across a lot of the things. So we, we didn't talk about everything I had in my outline. No, not not everything. My just is a very surprisingly talk decent about. portion for not directly going through it. Yeah, yeah. We got through sound. We got through some prioritization stuff, some motivation stuff, accountability. And, um, and there's going to be videos balance. on this. We're gonna we got a new hub page. I, yep. I don't remember. Pretty sure you mentioned that. But so yeah, we got it's college of Um, tweet a us college more of, question. Oh. I feel like the the Zoom latency problems are making it hard to. Oh, you you went robotic for a second. Oh, uh, that will do it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's collegeofgeek.com slash remote. Yes, is that hub page? Uh, for this episode, you can go over to cigpodcast.com slash two ninety one, and that is where you're going to find the show notes. We'll have links to everything we talked about, including that remote hub page, my study pl- music playlist. Um, and the study with me playlist in case you want to have somebody else kind of virtually there studying with you. Um, otherwise like, you know, find, find partners. Uh, there is a college info geek Habitica guild. If you go into the guilds and Habitica, I think it's like in the top 10 by number of members. So it's pretty active. I think you can go in there and say, Hey, you know, who wants to party up with me? We used to be in a Habitica party and we would keep each other accountable when we were fighting dragons and going on quests. Cause if you don't do your yeah, habits, it works pretty dragon well. damages everyone. Um, also the college of geek subreddit, which is at college slash community. That could be a good place to start a thread saying, Hey, I'm looking for an accountability partner uh, who wants to partner up and then, you know, figure out a system that works, not just like a, Hey, did you do your thing? Like 
have check-in times or have spreadsheets yeah. that you give be more your specific to. about what you're because if you're yeah. like your goal is to go for a run and you're like oh yeah i, I ran around the block real quick yep. if make sure you've set like a minimum that that counts that they're aware of or else yeah you can just use any excuse or you could set up a competition like hey uh whoever uh, um, that works whoever doesn't whoever gets like the least number of exercise minutes or something uh has to buy both of us a steam game that we can play together you know like so you know whoever, whoever like no, they gotta doesn't watch, do as they much. gotta watch that cut of the b movie where every time <laughs> they say whatever something you gotta like you gotta punish them it's gotta be torture <laughs> <laughs> All right, although have, although at that rate every week game. one person has to do this so maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's a little much how about this if all right if you if you don't do as much reading as i do you gotta buy me the steam game that we're gonna play together but if the margin is more than 15 percent, you also have to watch b movie oh, yeah, 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 where yeah, every yeah, time they margins. say the word b it plays the entirety of shrek and every time they say the word shrek it plays the entirety of the b movie yeah, which is is purgatory. Actually, that's literally it is what that purgatory. is. Purgatory. It's probably a bad way to get your stuff done, but it's a good punishment. <laughs> it is a good punishment. Okay, uh, cigpodcast.com is where you can go to learn how to subscribe to this show. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, Smoke Signals, Ethereal Space, Cosmic Rays, all the different find podcast distribution platforms out there on offer. So take your pick. Um, as people probably know, the College Info Geek podcast under that moniker is ending at episode 300, but Martin and I will be uh, spinning up a new podcast very shortly after. We're currently discussing names and formats and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, and almost certainly that new podcast will exist on the exact same feed as this podcast. I'm thinking we're just going to have a name change. Because yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily want to force everybody to have to subscribe to a new thing. And we've no, kind it, of it gotten away from silly. college topics for a while. It's going to be the same thing. We're just updating the name, basically. Yeah. If we were starting like a D&D podcast or something, it would be on a new oh, feed. Oh, that would be a new feed. Yeah. But we're going to talk about the same stuff is... with a little bit more variety, a little bit more uh, ability for us to branch out into things that aren't academic focused. But it, it's going to be pretty much the same show you've always known and loved under a new name. So it's going to use the same exact, um, the same exact feed. The only difference is that the feeds URL may change. Uh, Maybe. we're looking into ways yeah. to make that redirect we'll, properly we'll have to figure. And then I think like new episode show notes will probably just be on a different domain. Cause it wouldn't really make sense to have like the new show on college info geek. Yeah. So going forward, college info geek will be a more student focused resource. I think or at least going to be more focused on written articles and then we'll have our podcast on whatever the domain is for the name that we are coming up with. And then we'll have my YouTube channel, which is already quite separate from college info geek in terms of the branding and content and stuff like that. So yep. thanks as always for listening. If you want to support this show, a great way to do it is to share it with a friend, maybe send them your favorite episode and they might become a listener as well. Or you can leave us a rating and review on Apple podcasts. Since we are trying to just change the name, I'm hoping that all those reviews are going to stick around. I don't know. We have some, some research to do there, yeah, we'll but figure that out. Feedback is always appreciated and apparently five-star reviews and ratings and reviews, all that kind of stuff. Uh, potentially helps the position on the charts. I don't know if that's true. No one ever knows. No one podcasts so opaque. It makes YouTube and it's a weird algorithm look downright transparent by contrast, which is not true, yeah. but podcasting is just like throwing something into the void and hoping something comes back and hoping that something isn't some eldritch horror. Uh, anyway, college info geek.com. That's where you can currently go to make sure you're subscribed to the show and see other cool stuff we're creating, including those hub pages. And that's all we have for you this week. So thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, dealing with our new remote format. Hopefully everything goes without a hitch technology wise. And we will be back probably in this exact same format the next time we have an episode coming out. And uh, for the time being, you know, until everything goes back to some semblance of normal. So thanks for yeah. listening. We'll see you in the next episode. And uh, stay cute.